Satnam, yogis and yoginis, welcome back to the last part of this Mool Mantra course. I am very excited to be with you here in this very last part. It's been a long journey and we made it. So we have today ahead of us uh, a nice conclusion to everything that we have been seeing up until now. We've been getting all the principles and the virtues and the viruses. And now we come to the very end and we will explore Guru Prasad, Jap, and Art Sat Yugat Sat Hevi Sat Sat So that is what we have ahead of us today. And it's probably going to be a long video as well as usual. But um, we are going to be um, exploring what, what happens within us as we are chanting the Mul Mantra, especially at the very end, which is something very, very special. And I hope you stay with us uh, when we go into the at such you got such. So let's go ahead and we start tuning in as usual, chanting the Mul Mantra uh, uh, fully, completely. And then we will focus a little bit on the last part. Let's go. <clears throat> Ek onkar satanam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat ajuni sai bangur parasajap at sach yugat sach hebi sach nanako sebe sach Ik onkar satanam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat ajuni sai bhangur parasajap ad sach jugad sach he bhi sach nanak ho se bhi sach Ik onkar satanam karta purak Nirbho nirvera kal murat Ajuni sai bhangur prasajap Aad sach jugat sach he bhi sach nanak ho si bhi sach Gur prasad Gur prasad Jap Gur prasad Gur Prasad Jap At Sach Jugat Sach Hey Bi Sach Nanak Ho Si Bi Sach Hello. Oh, it's exciting to get to the end of the Mool Mantra. It's... Um, such a beautiful uh, weeks it has been for me going every week every week with one particle and we are coming to the end this is very exciting okay so Guru Prasad we come to the very last bits uh, let's go with Guru Prasad I will I will write write it down as usual and do a little bit of um, we philosophize this was the last week no sorry Previous to last, last week, um, after Seibang, what do we find? All right. So, Guru Prasad, Guru Prasad and beyond. Yeah. Well, Im immediately, the number that comes up is number 11. This is going to tell us something about this, but for the moment, let's just contemplate this. Which sounds appear? The G, the R, the P and the R, and the S and the D. Guru Prasad, Guru Prasad. And immediately something calls, calls, uh, catches my attention, which is that it starts with G and ends with D. And this is like, in a way, there's something in the middle, right? And this is kind of like God. 
And it's talking good prasad is is uh, something connected to God. So this is the first time that the letter D appears in the whole Mul Mantra. Ekon kar satnam kartapurak nirbo nirbe rakal murat ajuni say bhang gur prasad. The D appears for the first time, and so that's going to be relevant in some way. Yeah. So as usual, we're going to be exploring what is that sound and what does it mean and so on. But before we go into the into the sound of D, Guru, this is Guru, Guru, yeah, Guru, which is I explore the the word Guru very much in detail in another video in in this channel. So I'm not going to go into it. Um, so Guru is already explored. We have Par or Para or Pra. Para, pra, and then sat. Now sat in English exists this word, sadness, yeah. And it's interesting that sadness connects to longing. You will remember that when we were doing the Mul Mantra, we explored how, uh, like this is the pebble, the rock that hits the surface, and then on starts. And you know, the, the start the beginning, something has started, right? And this ong expresses a certain longing, a certain sadness. So long ong. And look, ong has the G, which is similar to the egg, to the K, but it's it's not the same. K and G, they are both produced in the throat, So they are guttural sounds, and so they are very much connected. But they are slightly different, K and G. But in any case, starts the Mul Mantra starts with Ek Ong. So the K and the G, we already explored this quite in depth. But I find it very interesting that um, the Mul Mantra starts with the K and the G. Sorry. Starts with the K and the G. Ek Ongkar Satnan Kartapurak Nirvo Nirvera Kalmuratajuni Sevan Gurprasad Jap. So when you get to Gurprasad, Jab is uh, a new section, then ends with the D. This aspect of God, G O D, yeah? Something generates, something starts, something is destroyed, delivered, or dead, yeah? Something dies. So this is again G O D. It happens within the word Kurprasat, but it also happens within the context of the whole, the whole mantra from the K and the G to Kurprasat. So sad, sadness, and, and that's connecting to the longing. And, and so it's not a coincidence at number 11, one plus one is two. And the second aspect was ong. And the ong talks about this longing and this sadness. We saw this a few times already when we said that there's two, five, eight, eleven, and how these numbers were connected. Yeah, you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. 10, 11, yeah? But somehow these are relevant and they are connected. And now we can see how this longing, sadness, in the number eight was expressed also. Number eight is the number of akal, so undead, but also death. Death is number eight, linked to number eight. So kal, akal. And we were talking about time as well. You will remember that kal meant time and death. So... As we go into the 11, Guru Prasad, it is not a coincidence that Prasad, already the word, even though it's English and it's not the original meaning, but it's already connected to this longing and the time that was passing through. We will see in the number two, time starts because with Ek, it was like this contraction and then the waves start Ek, Ong. So time was starting here. In Akal, we had like eternal, so non-dying, yeah, so the, the time was here. And now with 11, time is also going to be relevant. So time and also this longing, yeah. Okay. So what else, what else do we have? Look, PRS. We should be familiar with these three sounds already. PRS is Purusha, 
which we have been exploring, especially when we got to number five. And we had, now we are, we are in the five. We were talking about this Prakriti and Purusha. Yeah, the, the, the balance between the two. Yeah, Prakriti and Purusha. We talked a lot about this. <clears throat> so what, what happens is, um, I don't know, I don't want to write it here, but Purusha and Prakriti separate somehow, no? Purusha is like the spirit, is the consciousness, and as is descending, it's becoming material, it's becoming form, it ha it's having a form, that's Prakriti, and the creation appears. When we are going into Ek Onkar, God is creation, so as the creation is coming and it's being formed, that's Prakriti. But there is a certain intelligence, there is a certain consciousness behind, and that's the Purusha, that's the spirit. But we are in the realm of Prakriti, and through our senses we see Prakriti, we hear Prakriti, we smell Prakriti. And when we, are into, when we enter into meditation, our sensitivity can be attuned to more subtle things. And we are coming away from the senses and going inwards, and then we can raise the consciousness towards, not Prakriti, but Purusha, towards the spirit. So, if you remember that in the last video we, we talked about how Seibang, it was about reaching the crown. Yes. And look, this is the lower chakras are the lowest form of matter. These, the first five chakras are the elements. This is earth, water, fire. And earth is the more uh, gross element. And as we are going up, we're going into more subtle elements. And when we go even higher, we go beyond the five elements and we go into the realm of more subtle, more subtle, more subtle into Purusha. So the higher you go, you go into Purusha. So there is this, this movement. Saibang is telling us, look, you reach the crown. Now you are in, in the light, the light of consciousness. And that light is linked to Purusha. And that's Prasad, Guru Prasad. That's when Purusha comes here. I'm not even talking about the meaning of the word Guru Prasad. I'm just saying how the sounds of Guru Prasad contain within this essence that we are going up higher and we are connecting with the spirit, with the consciousness, with Purusha. This is it. And uh, you will remember that um, the J in Ajuni. This is a little bit of review, eh? what we were seeing the last times. In the, in the ninth aspect, in Ajuni, we mentioned how J is the sound of merger and join. It's the sound of edges, an edge, yeah? And so this was the edge towards the joining, the merger of Saibang, yeah? merging with Saibang. So we are crossing that. We will find this J again when we go into Jap. We're going to see that today. But right here, it was like a, 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 an edge to go into the ten, to go into the uh, Seibang. And what happens is, when if we reach Purusha and we manage to hold our own essence, our own one, little one, and you do one, two, three, four, all the way to ten, when you get to 10, you can have a 10 plus 1 experience, which is the 11. So let me just do it like this. So 10 plus 1 is 11. What do I mean by this? I mean, this is a, something that I mentioned in the other video I said I would talk about in this video, which is the shortcut. And this is a story I was told about how a Konkar Sadgur Prasad happened. And the story goes like that. It's like somebody in the community was asking Guru Gobind Singh, like, you know, this whole thing about the Moon Mantra is so long. Ekonkar, Satnam, Kartapurak, Nirva, Nirver. Why so much effort? Is there not a shortest path? Is there no shortcut? And, and somehow Guru Gobind Singh as well, does anybody know a shortcut? And some Sikh stood up and said, Ekonkar, Sat, Guru Prasad. <laughs> so that's... Um, I don't know if it, the story happened like that or it's just like, it's just funny anyway. 
So you can go ekonkar sat nam karta purak nirbon nirver nalap o ekonkar sat and in sat you find a shortcut towards kurprasat. And so remember that sat nam was in the realm of the heart. So in a way we are saying that as we are doing ekonkar sat as we get to the heart there is a shortcut to find the gurprasat which you could you could see it like this ek on kar sat and if you add all of them you have 10 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10 but if you manage to hold your ek your one then it's 10 plus 1 that's 11 yeah you should not forget the ek you should not forget yourself as you are raising in consciousness so Guru Prasad would be an experience and a, um, an experience of God and me, me and God. Yeah, we are together. I'm the little one. God is a big one, but we are together in some way. And that experience, that experience is given by the Guru. Yeah, and we will talk a little bit about the the actual meaning of Guru Prasad, but I don't want to go into that yet. Because as I mentioned, we have one sound to explore, which is the sound D, Kurprasat. And I will not talk a lot about what D is. I will, uh, let's go into this little book that I always use. And in the sound D, I will not explore all of it because I already have a video on this, but I will just uh, contemplate what is relevant to us. D is like a door which divides a space into two equal parts. It sets up a, a gate midstream in an ongoing process. So there is a stream, there is a direction, and the direction is overwhelmingly downward. With D, with the, the words which are D are generally meaning something that goes down. And especially we are considering the, the letter D at the end of the words. So um we can find D at the beginning, we can find D in the middle. D is somehow going downwards. And when I talked about the letter D in the mantra course, I talked about how we go from feelings to emotions, but also about how the energy must be coming down into the heart. And this is what we are going to be exploring today a lot. Now, the thing is, when the letter D is at the end of a word, it generally uh, talks about some sort of obstacle. How does he say it? Usually at the beginning of the word, um, the gate in D serves to impede or subdue the process in any number of ways. Um, so uh, when, when, you know, the most basic word do, to do, the gate is opened. Yeah, but when it's at the very end, we'll find it, look, have a, uh, sorry, um, at the very end, implies an obstacle to work or cross through. Bound, plot, pound, stride, tread, or weight. Sorry, I had it here in green. I got this from her PhD, not from the actual book, but from the PhD that this book is based on. So there is all this number of words which create some sort of obstacle that we have to cross through. And the letter D is also, pulling, is also pulling us down, pulling us down. The very word down comes from the letter D, but not only, especially with this, the letter D at the end of the word, we just saw the word sad. And when we are sad, the energy of the body goes downwards. Uh, we see that, the, that even the temperature of the body cools down, the, the energy goes down and the temperature goes, cools down. So that's the word sad, but we find it in, in the word void, when there is a void, we, we can fall into it. So it's like falling into the void. We can find it in words like not, to not, like falling asleep, <laughs> literally your head falling down. There's, there's so many examples. And, uh, and this, Macarin Magnus explores how over 50% of the D words, the words with the letter D, mean down either literally or metaphorically. And she explores this in depth. We are not going to go into that, but depth is also another word which goes down and checks how deep things are. So 
the letter D is, is calling us to go down and there is some obstacle to cross. That's what the D is telling us. And look, that's the very last sound of Guru Prasad. So something in the sound is telling us, look, you got to, to, you got to say bang, well done, excellent. You, well done, you got to the crown, you got to the light, to the radiance, the enlightenment. That's really nice. Let's remember this diagram. But, Guru Prasad, now you have to come down. Don't stay here. You have to come down. That's very interesting. Where do we have to come down? We're going to have to, we're going to have to explore that a little bit more. But it's interesting how uh, when, when Margaret Magnus talks about the letter T, she mentions how the letter T does not present an obstacle. It, it's actually pushing you and moving, moving you along in a certain direction, especially if it's combined with the letter R, which creates a lot of movement. So T with R, you will have trek and trip and, and a trajectory and a traversing and and a trek, a trek already said, but um, with an S in front, you will even have a straight line, straight, a street and a strip and a, a string. And a, so you can see how the letter T is moving you in that, in one direction easily and soft, while the letter D, D is having to, to tread, to plot, to wait, to, there is a, a difficulty, a challenge into the, that sound. So T and D, that's very different. And that's interesting because when we got to the heart from the Ekonkar Sat, in the heart we found the T. But that was easy, Satnam. It, when you get to the T in Satnam, you want to go to the Nam. Satnam, 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 Satnam. While when you get to the D, Guru Prasad, Guru Prasad, it's... It's something challenging is, is going to come. Something challenging is coming. So we're going to explore this a little bit more. But for the moment, just consider that. How when we have this um, D at the, at the very end, we're going to see this also today in when we get to this part. Add to God. Yeah, so there's going to be some sort of challenge here as well. All right. Okay. So, where do we go from here? Well, how about we explore the actual meaning of the of the words? So, if we look at Well, Guru Prasad, basically the meaning, if you look in the dictionary, it just says, by the grace of the Guru. Yeah, that's very simple. So Prasad is grace, by the grace, and Guru is the Guru, yeah. Guru, I already explored in another video, para is like um, um, crossing through, or like, um, um, yeah, like, for example, or beyond, something like that, crossing or beyond. Like when we use words in English like paranormal, something that is beyond the normal. So this is kind of beyond or crossing. And sat, even though in English that means sadness, in Gurumukhi, if you look in Sanskrit, this comes from sada, which means always or ever or perpetually at all times. That's the definition from the Sanskrit dictionary. So sad is implying always. And that is a form of time. So interesting that we were mentioning how in the two, the time appears. In the eight is a kal, kal meaning time, literally. And in the 11, Guru Prasad, the always appears, which is also in relationship to the time. So time is very relevant to these sounds. That's interesting. And actually, as I was looking at the word I was trying to find this sad in, in Sanskrit. Comes from sada, yeah? Sada. So as I was looking for this word, I came upon also sama. And, and he says, because I was looking in the, 
in the English part of the dictionary for always words which mean always. And I, I came upon Sada and I came with Sama. It says always the same. Sama means always the same, which the word English same comes from Sama. And there is a very, very important word that comes from here, which is Samadhi. Which contains the D, yeah? And the, and the S, and the S, so it's like the S and the D, the S and the D, Samadhi, with the M in, in between. So, very interesting that as we were talking how in Seiban you get to the crown and there is this light, this is a state of Samadhi. This is a Samadhi. And the letters for Samadhi appear here. Which, you know, Samadhi is challenging to get there. It's not an easy path. That's why the, the D is also present in there. But, okay. So, in a way, this is telling us, the Guru is telling us, go, sorry, the Guru is telling us, go beyond, beyond the always, beyond the always. Literally, this means by the grace of Guru. So, all that has happened until now, ekonkar, sadnam, kartapura, you know, being without fear, without enemies, uh, undying, unborn, all these qualities are a gift from the Guru. And this is all thanks to the Guru that this has happened. And, um, and that's the actual meaning of Guru Prasad, but the very word Guru Prasad, remember, he was telling us that we, are, we were coming, something has to go down, there's going to be an effort, and we can go beyond even beyond, para, yeah? Beyond this state of always. What is this beyond? What is this going down? Going down where? Where do we get into the beyond? How do we get into the beyond? Well, the answer to all this, of course, is in the next part of the Mul Mantra, which is, by the way, the Mul Mantra, some people consider it finishes here, because this is the form of the Mul Mantra which appears more times in the Siri Guru Granth Sahib. I, I think it appears like 11 times. No, 33 times I think it appears. However, the, um, the full Mul Mantra until here, some people also consider this is the full Mul Mantra, only appears once, which is in the, the very first sentence, which is by Guru Nanak, and the prelude to the Jabji as well. And I consider the whole of it Mul Mantra, but it doesn't matter whether it finishes here or is the whole of it. I believe this bit is very relevant, and so that's why we're going to consider it. So the D is telling us something has to come down, come down where we can go beyond, how to get into the beyond, Japa. So let's go. Japa is the next bit. And I'll just straight away tell you that the, the, actual, the, the actual meaning of Japa, sometimes we, when we see the translations of the Japji, it, which by the way, you can find, this is the yeah, Japji. We would have G as the Jivan, the soul, and Jap, this Jap. So how do we get there and you know how to go into the beyond? Well, through Japji. But what is Japji? What is Jap? <laughs> okay, so Jap normally is translated something like repeat and chant, meditate, something like that. If we look at the original in Sans Sanskrit, Jap would mean whisper. I like, I like to mention this because there is something very beautiful about whispering, yeah? It's the, the language of the lovers, yeah? There is something about uttering, uttering in, your, in a very low voice. So repeating, but in a very low voice, prayerfully, like a prayer. And uh, so whisper, whisper it. Ekunkar satnam kartaporak nirbao nirvera kalmurat. Yeah, very soft. And repeat it and rechant it and again and again and again and again. That's um, so it's not just chanting it, but it's also like whispering it. That uh, I like the whisper that it has the S sound, which we have seen connected to the Kundalini, and I find it interesting that it can be present throughout our chanting, yeah, whispering it. 
So that's Jap, but um, that's the actual meaning of the word. I always explore uh, the, the meaning of the sounds. So when we look at the sound P, we have already seen P a few times in the Mul Mantra, but there is something about P at the very end of a word, in this case, up, up, w w together with words which finish, finish in up. So the words that finish in up, they are flat. So you can see, for example, a cup, a flap, a lap, a map. <laughs> These are all flat things. And uh, so this is one of the examples that Margaret Magnus gives in her book. Yeah, it, the letter str I mentioned before is like a like a string, like a straight line, like a straight a straight thing. So str plus up strap is a straight and flat thing. Strap is something straight and is something flat. So that was the example that she gives in the book. Now for us, we have the J and we have the up. And we know what the J is, right? You know it, it's an edge. So we have something flat and we have an edge. There we go. So there is an edge here. And which you will remember this, this symbol. I was already alluding to it and mentioning it when we were coming into Ajuni. Like there has to be a crossing to go to the, to the crown. But now we find that after you are established in the crown and you're shining and brilliant and there is samadhi and there is illumination, you still have to jump. Look, jump, jump. Isn't it similar? I'm just putting the M here. And remember, the M is what I added in the middle of Samadhi, yeah? Samadhi, this is the same M. Things will start to make a lot of sense, yeah? You see the M in Samadhi and you see the M in Jump. This is Sad and this is Jap. And the M is coming here, the M from the Om, if you wish. And it's telling us, look, you go into Samadhi, but then you have to jump. Well, very, very interesting. So after you get to the crown and you will remember this from the drawing. We have been doing a long journey Now there is illumination, enlightenment, but that's not the liberation. That's not the end of the journey. We have to jump. There is a leap of faith. Yes. Well, leap of faith, of faith where? Where are we going to jump? Well, it's obvious. Or should be obvious. To the next bit. <laughs> this is where we jump. Where do we jump? Atsach, Yukatsach, Hevisach, Nanak, Hosibisach. So that's the last bit. It's a long A, you got such. So let's explore what this means. Ad, Jugad, Hey, B, Nanak, Hosi, B. Nanak, uh, this is Guru Nanak talking about himself. This is like as if I was saying, Oh, Ardas, this is incredible. Like talking to myself, right? So Guru Nanak is talking to himself and saying, Ad, Sa, Jugad, Sa, Hey, Sa, Nanak, Hosi, B, Such. So literally the translation would be Ad, that would mean that was at the beginning of the times. It was true. Such means true. Jugad, through the Jugas, through the different ages, was true. Hey, be such. This is true now. 
here and now. This is happening. It's true. And uh, Nana, go, oh, Jose, be such. This will be always, forever, be be true. What is true? Everything. Everything we just said. Ekonkar Sadnan Kartapurak. That is true, and it will always be true. So that's um, the literal translation to things. Now, uh, Guru Nanak says here such, and I'm saying true, but wasn't true sat, the word sat? It is, actually it's the same. Sat and such is the same. As far as I know, it is just like, um, I wouldn't say as long, but like a different, like the way language evolves, such would be a uh, so true, sat became such in different areas of the Punjab. And in Punjabi, especially in more rural areas, they would say such. And actually, you will find in some of the writings from the Gurus, they use such. And some of the writings, they use sat. And, and I believe uh, um, Guru Nanak was standardizing the Mul Mantra when he, in the, in the first part of the Mul Mantra, he transformed such nam which appears in some writings, Satchanam, he transformed it into Satnam. So in, in some ways, when he was speaking to the townspeople, he wanted to be understood, and he would speak their language and their, their, um, their own variation of Gurmukhi or Punjabi. And in that variation, they would say Satch, like their dialect, yeah? And then when he came upon standardizing the Mul Mantra, which would become repeated again and again throughout the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, he transferred it into Sat, which is the more classical way of saying it, because Sat is the coming from the, from the Sanskrit. Yeah? Sat comes from the Sate in Sanskrit. Yeah, meaning truth. So such and Sat is the same. However, it's not the same to say sat or such because one finishes with a letter T and one finishes with the letter CH. So the, the sound of CH is going to be relevant. Yeah. Such or such. Yeah. So let's just check, check what the letter CH is regarding the study that Marmalade Manus did. Ch is chewy or choppy and changes form, but not without a challenge. And it is pronounced the same as, phonetically it's written the same as these two sounds, but this is ch, ch. So it's a combination of these two sounds. And remember the T provides a direction and the sh expresses an environment or impediment that T must go through. Remember, we were talking about the letter D, how said there was going to be a challenge. Now, it's saying that as we cross this challenge through a certain direction, there's going to be this CH sound. That's going to be expressed that we are crossing through some challenge. And... Um, Yeah, I, I'm not going to go into all this, but um, maybe maybe just this mention this thing. When we put three things together, we make a band, like a band of music, yeah? But when we have to group them together to hold them still, it's a bunch. We have to hold it with pressure. So the difference between band and bunch is that one has to hold pressure and the other one does not. I mentioned how the difference between J and Ch, which is J, Ch, is very similar, but J is soft and without pressure, and Ch requires some effort. So being in a jazz band, jamming with your friends, that's very nice and kind. When you are in a lesson teaching, uh, you are being, um, there's a teacher and you're receiving the lesson, that's hard, that requires effort. When you are jogging in the street, it's nice and soft. When you are marching in the military, that requires some effort. So the ch sound, again, just like in band or bunch of things, a band of things or a bunch of things, when we go into the sat or such, sat would be effortless and such requires effort. 
So, where do we go with all this effort? Well, we go into the sat, but with the effort. Now, what was the sat? Sat, satnam, was the heart. So, the at such, you got such, he be such, nanagosi be such, and there is four of them, and they are talking about sat, with effort. So, it's telling us, you have to jump into the heart. This is where you have to end. The very end, look, the very last word of the Mul Mantra, such, is telling us where do we have to finish. Where do we start? In the Ek. Where do we end? In the truth. In the reality. And the truth and the reality, you know in Spanish something um, r real, we say real, is the same to say something royal, means the king or the queen. Now we have been putting our crowns in our crown center, we let our kundalini go up and we crown ourselves with the with the consciousness, yeah, we merging with Purusha, yeah, in this experience of ecstasy and samadhi. Now, that's not the end. That's an enlightenment. That's not the liberation. You want to get to the liberation, you still have to come to the heart, to the truth. And you find your true um, self in the heart through the satanam. And this is why uh, again and again and again in the in the whole Siri Guru Granth Sahib and Guru Nana, that's all he said. It's just Chandanam, Chandanam, Japa, Japa, repeat, repeat, meditate, whisper it if you wish, yeah? Chandanam, because that's going to take you to the Satanam, the true name, your true identity. So at the end, you have to end up in the heart. It's not about ending in your head and getting with a very big turban or a very big head, but it's actually ending up in the heart. But that's ending up in the heart after doing the whole journey. Very often what I see in the spiritual path is people who come to yoga with a very big heart, they've been coming up from Ekonkar to Satnam, they've been racing from their lower impulses and the rim, impulse, impulses from the instincts, yeah, the animal instincts, and they raced into their heart, their human heart, and that's a very beautiful place to be but they don't raise any higher. They, they, they feel like this is the end. That's it. This is what I have to do. I don't have to do anything else. Just be in the heart. And in a way, it could be true because there is the possibility for the shortcut, Ekon Kar Sat Gur Prasat, but very often you find that as soon as they settle in the heart, they start losing a lot of the ek of themselves. Yeah, And sometimes they start having money problems or problems with the house, they don't have a, a, a home, they have uh, sexual relationships are a challenge, they, there's all sorts of issues that arise from feeling that something is not complete. So yes, they got to their heart, they are very loving people, a lot into service, a lot into doing things for others, and somehow in themselves something is not really working well. So this is going ekon kar satnam and staying there. Now, um, the Mul Mantra is telling us, okay, Satnam, Kartapurak, Nirvao, don't assume you reached anywhere, just carry on, carry on, carry on, say bang, now come down at Satsugat, heavy Satan, and there's going to be an effort to do that. Such, there is an effort to get to this place. It's not easy. And even, you know, if you, there is an effort to get to the top, but even if you get to the top, when you get into this ananda, you may get lost as well. You know, samadhi, there's the experience of bliss, and sometimes we may get lost in the bliss. But remember, our identity is sat, chit, ananda, not just ananda. So you get to the top, and then you're in this ananda, in joy and merger and light and beautiful, and, and leaving this to come down to the heart may be very challenging as well. Ch challenging. So this is what... The Mul Mantra is telling us as well, there is going to be an effort to come down into the heart. You're going to have to, to cross some barrier. And look, I just thought, hey, B sat, Naneko Hosi, B sat. We didn't talk about these other sounds, but look, BH appears here. Remember, B is the sound of barriers. 
which the baby has to cross when it's born. Born, baby, the body of the baby is born through crossing the barrier. That's the letter B, B are barriers. So there is going to be an effort and we have to go down. We have to go down this good prasad, the D, at Jugat. Remember it, there is an edge. You have to go through. Remember your longing, grow through, go through. There's an effort, calm down and then you reach the such. And the beautiful, beautiful thing is that even though such, uh, when, when you say such is truth, there is another thing which is also such, which is such kind. There is five realms, and the very end of the Jabji talks about these five realms which are beyond life and death. And you know this beyond that I was saying today? This is the beyond. This is what is beyond. If you go beyond the cycle of life and death, beyond the samsara, you will remember in the Akal Murat, beyond the samsara, look what do you find here? The blue ethers, the cans, here they are. And if you can go beyond good Prasad by the grace of Guru, not just by your personal effort, but if the grace comes, and look what it says here, Purusha. Ah, now many things make sense, right? I hope now, you know, all the pieces are clicking together, the puzzle. And if you go into the blue ethers, look, there is five blue ethers. And the first ones, you go back. You go into the blue ethers and then you go back to life. You incarnate again. Learn your lesson and come back and experience again. When uh, a being is um, fortunate and does the effort and has this... Uh, uh, blessing uh, that enough that he can go to the very top to cross through all the cans and reach the last one, the pure merger with God, that's such kant, that's such. So the very Mool Mantra, when you read it, the very first line of the Sigur Gran Sahib is telling a look, start in neck, go through the whole process, develop your all your virtues, yeah? Little by little, with humility, you are not separated. Obey, feel the connection and obey, be loyal. And you know what? Ekunkar, we are all the same. We're all one. So treat everyone kindly and with equality. And by doing that, you will come into yourself, your heart. And from your heart, you will want to serve others and serve the truth and be truthful with yourself and with others. And if you are truthful with yourself, you will know that there is one false part of you, your ego, which is going to have to be sacrificed, the small s, self-sacrifice. And we sacrifice this, and that's a path that is like the warrior path. The warrior has to be fighting for justice, not against anyone, but fighting for justice with faith, and that's fearless. And But if we are all one, then there is no enemy. So whatever happens is just karma, forgive and mercy, the path of the hero. And so whatever you experience, whatever you see is going to be through compassion. You're going to see it through compassion and remember that nothing dies. We are all beyond. There is a part of us which goes beyond. And if we go beyond the feeling of death and, you know, fear and anger and all these things, then we can find peace. And in this peace, we can radiate. Yeah, there is a, a courage to get here, but also there's a, a royal courage, like the king or the queen with the crown. And from the crown, you can radiate. Now, doing all this path and jumping a leap of faith into your heart, that's going to get you into your Nam, your true identity, the Nam, and you may get to the such kind. And that, this is like a little two-minute summary of the whole path which the Mul Mantra was already telling us, which is a summary of the whole of the Jabji. If you read the Jabji, it's just an explanation of this. And the Jabji finishes with five Kants, telling us, look, you can get to such Kant. And at the end, this is a summary of the whole Siri Guru Granth Sahib. So it's just the whole essence is in the Mul Mantra. And so just by chanting it, whispering it softly, you can connect to it, you can develop these virtues, these, these avoid devices and the viruses and attune yourself with this idea. So that's it. This is the 
very end of this wonderful course, I think the best way to finish it is chanting. So how about we chant the Mul Mantra a few more times? And just because we go into the heart, I'm going to put my, my hands in the heart. And I, in, I suggest that you do the same. And if you can chant with me, that would be great. And let's chant together a few times. Ekonkar satunam karta parak nirbo nirvera kalmurat hajuni seivang gurprasat jap had such jugat such he be such nanaka hosi pe such ekonkar satunam karta parak nirbo nirvera kalmurat Ajuni Saibang Gurprasad Jap At Sach Yugat Sach Hebi Sach Nanaka Hosibi Sach Ekonkar Satanam Karta Purak Nir Bho Nir Vera Kal Murat Ajuni Saibang Gurprasad Jap At Sach Yugat Sach Hebi Sach Thank you very much, everyone who is still here. Thank you for having come along this beautiful journey of exploration on the beauty of the Mul Mantra. Thank you, Guru Nanak, for leaving us this jewel for us to explore and experiment with ourselves. And I'm going to take a few hol uh, holidays, a few weeks holiday, <laughs> and I will come back with new videos soon. But um, yeah, enjoy the summer if you are in the northern hemisphere of the planet. And I'll see you back in a few weeks with, who knows? <laughs> what's the next course what's the next video that I will do I think I have a few pending videos to do and then maybe I'll go to another course Who's, who knows I'll see you soon Sadnam thank you very much <laughs>